Ghana, a country in West Africa. Ghana is one of the largest cocoa producers globally, with its cocoa trees contributing to global diversity and supporting unique ecosystems. I looked at it from space. I saw a spot, a lake which is almost perfectly round shaped, big enough that roads are diverted on either side of it. Looking at it from this side, I could see it has mountains around it. And if you zoom in all the way, you could see villages around it. There are about 30 villages around the lake with a combined population of about 70,000. According to the local legend, Lake Bosomtri was created when a hunter pursued an antelope. The wounded animal vanished into a small pond and the water surged forth, forming the lake. Scientists, however, tell us a different tale. They believe Lake Bosomtri was formed when a meteorite struck the head, leaving behind a massive crater. Over time, this crater filled with water, creating the lake we see today. One speaks of celestial collisions, other speaks of mystical interventions. I just wanted to answer one question, which one holds the truth? I was completely clueless when I started this project. I had no idea who to talk to or where to find information. And I wasn't present in Ghana at that time, so I wondered, if I could find all the answers I needed just by using the internet. I turned to some basic googling and I saw the impact creator of Lake Bosomtri happened during the Pleistocene period. Pleistocene. What's Pleistocene period? So I started looking for someone who knows more about the Pleistocene period and how that affected the formation of Lake Bosomtri. And that led me to Professor Sam. I reached out to Professor Sam to see if he could spare some time to chat about the period. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it for a video call, but he sent me an email. Hey Andy, during the Pleistocene period, a meteorite struck the earth in what is now Ghana. Over the time, this depression filled with rainwater and groundwater forming Lake Bosomtri. Approximately 1.07 million years old. 1.07 million years old. Older than Mount Helens. Older than Mount Perikutin. Older than Mount Ingaruho. This thing is ancient. This means it's been there for a very long time. But one email wasn't enough to uncover the lake's full story. I needed another perspective. A lot of research has been done about meteorite impact craters. Mm. And we, the scientists, we have come out of certain criteria. And for Bosomchi, for instance, um, uh, you know, the, when the meteorite is coming, it comes with a high pressure, very high pressure and temperature. See, because it is passing through the atmosphere, it's like a, 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 a ball of a fire or fireball or something like that, because it's heated up. Mm. So when it hits the ground, it causes the materials there to melt. Mm -hmm. And also a lot of pressure is impacted on the ground. So we call them shock waves. So these propagate into the ground and cause deformations. And then these melts, these melts are also thrown out. So sometimes if you don't take care, you may be confused with a volcanic eruption. So basically, what Prof. is trying to say is that meteorite impact creators can be mistaken for volcanic creators, especially when they are highly eroded or their ecological complex is now well understood. You see, when the, the meteorite is coming down, because the velocity is so high, as soon as it hits the ground, the point of first contact, the rocks there or the, the, the materials there become molten, and then they are splashed out, and they fly with almost uh, the same velocity that the meteorite is coming with. So for, for the Bosomchi, uh, the material landed somewhere in the Ivory Coast for the tectiles. I did some digging on tectiles in Ivory Coast, and guess what? They are believed to have come from Lake Bosomchi. Apparently, they are around a million years old, 
And here is the cool part. The year they landed matches the year the Lake Busson Tree Crater was formed. Isn't that fascinating? As fascinating as the scientific explanations are, this story is incomplete without hearing from the people who have lived by the lake for generations. So I began looking for locals around the lake. We talked to resorts, nearby residents, churches, but after a while, nobody seemed to know. I felt stuck, like we've exhausted what we can find out on the internet. And there was nowhere to go from here. At this point of the process, it felt like we might need to take a drastic approach. Maybe we could hire someone to go there and talk to the locals about their tale of how the Lake Bosom Tree was formed. And that's how we met Kobishat. Kobishat is a cinematographer who runs a film production in Kumasi. He's been doing it for a very long time. He was willing to embark on the journey to the lake. So on a Saturday morning, he and his crew set off on their adventure. He kept me updated on every step of their journey. He captured scenes as they drove through the countryside of Ashanti region. The fish sellers, the street hawkers, and the rice sellers. They waited for like two hours until they found an elder of the town who knows the story of the lake and agreed to talk to them. So we are just starting out with the interview part where we ask about the legend, the history, the significance of the lake and everything that needs to be known. All right, so. Okay, so this is the interview. 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 Ayakosi <laughs> I'm called Adam in Kakran, say. Send air da bonnet. Now, boy, take a suit in a baton, kiss your kitu, myra. A brave woman will be a young lady, and I'm to say, you never bosom. And this will travel to myra, a brave air da bonnetia, and this is a bosom and a more born or train. And they gave it a name Bosom Chain, Bosom Chain, Lake Bosom Chain, which means the antelope guard. Common is the same fort. Sixteen forty. That's when the mystical intervention happened. It's very important because Professor Sylvester also says something. When you look at um, the value uh, uh, data on rainfall in West Africa, West Africa, 
you know, at that time, the lake had exploded. There was a drought in the whole of West Africa mm. at that time. So the, the, the lake level must have been, uh, or the water, there was virtually no water in that whole depression. But just at a small point, when you look at the paleo data on, on rainfall, you see that there was no rainfall in West Africa around that time. So the place, trees, trees even grew in the, in the depression. But if there's no rain, grass and trees will grow. So that's why you have the tree storms still sitting yes. there. Yes. Uh, so it was later that we had a lot of rain filling the depression. And that's why the trees died. And this time, if you go, you still see some tree storms yes. you know, in, in the water. I did a quick search on droughts in West Africa and found out that there was one about 300 years ago. So about 300 years ago, West Africa experienced a prolonged drought causing Lake Bosumtrin, its only source of water being rainwater, to be transformed into a small pond. That's when the hunter chased the wounded antelope into the lake. When I was going through all the footage Kobishad team sent me after they made it back home, something caught my attention. In one of the videos, the locals said, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed. So out of curiosity, I did a quick search. Why is Lake Busumche drying up? I decided to dig deeper. Using Google, I compared the lake size in 2025 to what it was in 1984. And there it was. The surface area has shrunk from 52 square kilometers to just 47. That's a big difference. This wasn't just an observation anymore. It was a concern. I needed to know more. So I reached out to experts people who truly understand why this is happening. One of the major factors has to do with anthropogenic activities, human activities, encroachment of the lake. In addition to the climate change condition, the area of the entire group, yeah. it is impacting negatively on the lake because Global continuous warming of the area leads to excessive evaporation. And if you see the lake also rejuvenate or replenish its water, one way of the lake also replenish its water is through um, runoff water. That is water from the uh, rainfall. When rainfall occurs, mm -hmm. once the rainfall part in the temperature increases, rainfall begins to diminish. It also kind of influence the volume. And once the volume of the water continues to dwindle or decrease, then it means that we are losing part of the aqua management area to dry land. Instead of it being wetland, it changes from dry land to wetland. And once human beings get advantage of dry land, they may start either farming or putting up structures along that area. And we are beginning to continue to close in as far as the landmass of the lake is concerned. As the lake continues to shrink, the people who depend on it are not just standing by helplessly. In recent years, local communities have taken action working to preserve the lake for future generations. To learn more, we spoke to Ba Asarubidiako who shares how these efforts are making a difference. What do you think? What is the future of Lake Bosumche? So in terms of preservation, actually, I've also heard news on what you, you just mentioned. And to my author's surprise, when we went there, actually these people have taken time off to plant trees mm. around this area. Yeah. So in terms of preservation, seriously, they are doing very well. So yeah, I, seriously, I also thought it was, it was because it's a kind of a rural area. Mm -hmm. you know, these people might not have the knowledge to kind of preserve it. Mm -hmm. But from from the anecdotal um, evidence of those that we gathered, 
we realize that they fish there, but also they have specific days that they are not allowed to fish. So it was very shocking to see that the, the lake is actually very well preserved. They've planted trees around there to uh, serve as kind of barriers to, I don't know what they are doing, but in terms of preservation, they are doing very well. So I think um, we will still be able to uh, maintain this monumental size for generations to come. We only know this thanks to dozens of people, a lot of time spent on the internet, and the long, brave journey to the lake. Of course, a story like this can keep going more and more specifics. Perhaps the truth lies not in one story, but in the way the tale shapes our understanding of the world.